What I'd like to do is, uh, based on the way it's laid out on my screen, you know, introduce people and just call your name and let you, you know, say who you are and welcome your salutation, whatever you would like to say, and then the company, the organization that you're part of, and let's let's do self introductions that way, and you know, take three to five. It's always great to hear from you, and would like to give you that opportunity to speak up and speak your piece for just a second or two. Uh, and so to my left on the screen is Alexander Burroughs. Hi, Sasha Burroughs with the BCPC Communications Associate. I probably should have introduced myself as well, Bill Simmons with the Broadband Consortia. And then to my right is Greg Hayward. Good morning, everyone. Greg Hayward, Trackable Health, just back from Eielson, Alaska, the North Pole. So I'll put in a good word with Santa for anybody that needs it. <laughs> And next to him is Maria Kelly. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Maria Kelly, Broadband Consortium. Thanks for being here today. And then Shelby Arthur. Hi, everyone. Shelby Arthur. I am also supporting the Broadband Consortium and then also helping out the EDC a little bit with their um, Small Business Development Center. Nice to see everyone. Maria is located in San Luis Obispo County and Shelby is located in Santa Barbara County. Mike Johnson. You're next up. Mike Johnson, Ventura City Council. Thank you for being here, Mike. James August. Hi, I'm Jim August. I'm the Chief Information Officer for CSU Channel Islands. Thank you for being here, Jim. Brian Chong. Yeah, Brian Chong, City of Moore Park. I sent Greg to Alaska with some tacos, but then he came back anyways, so. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeffrey Lambert. Hi, everybody. Jeffrey Lambert, Ventura County Community Foundation. Good to see you. Eleanor Gartner. Hi, everyone. Eleanor Gartner, Public and Government Affairs at Cox Communications in Santa Barbara. Thank you for being here, Eleanor. Lorelei. Hey, you're talking. Hi, everybody. It's Lorelei Kappel here, City of Atascadero Community and Economic Development. And Lorelai, you'll be up after, you'll be up next because we know that you've got a short window and we'd like you to talk about what you're doing up there. Thanks. And actually I've been able to extend my um move my meeting. So I'm I'm here. I'm here okay. to you. Monica Gibbs is next. Hi, Monica Gibbs with ATT. And Scott Pullman follows. Yeah, hi, Scott Pullman, business development with Lubin. Thank you for being with us, Scott. Thank you. Noel, long time no see. Long time, Bill. Noel Radia, CTO of Digital Value Creation. We work with small businesses and social impact organizations. And I'm also an advisor at the Small Business Development Center. I work with Bill and the BCPC for doing a lot of brainstorming and thinking and strategizing. And Jamie Fall. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, first meeting for me. I'm a relatively new as Workforce and Economic Strategies Director for the Ventura County EDC, and I'm uh, heading up their digital upskilling initiative. Thank you. Tim Tierney. Uh, hello, everybody. My name's Tim. I do GIS support for the Broadband Consortium. And Brian Coleman. Hello, all. I'm Brian Coleman. I'm with the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, and I'm the uh, regional representative who covers the uh, Central Coast area. Thank you for joining us, Brian. George Amendola. Hi, good morning, everyone. George Amendola, CISO for Syncracy.io. We work with mid-sized enterprise and government institutions to help with digital transformation. I could have sworn you were probably golfing today, George. I'd like to be. <laughs> Miguel Perez. Oh, that's a strange sound. Your, your audio is kind of gorbled. His broadband is terrible. Yeah, try, try again. You sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> there you are. Nope. I don't know what time. Yo, now you're back. Thank you. Um, hey, everyone. It's actually my first meeting. Uh, pleasure to meet you guys. I'm from the city of Santa Paula, and I'm their 
current management intern here at the local city hall. So it was nice to be here with everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad to have gotten your email and glad you could make it. Thank you. Hi, Gary. Gary Smart. Yeah, Gary Smart, County Santa Barbara Public Works. Thank you for joining us. Steve Sawyer. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, this is Steve Sawyer with Charter Communications, also known as Public Works. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Laura Fiedler. Good morning, my name is Laura Fiedler and I'm the Economic Development Manager for Slope County. Hi, Laura. And Abby just changed her name to Abby Rees. I'm glad you did, Abby. Thank you for joining us. Is she going to say something? She does. She put in chat. She doesn't have a mic microphone. So okay. she introduced herself in chat. Thank you for thank you for uh, spotting that for me. Uh, Megan Beresford, we're doing self introductions. I think you just popped in. I did. Yes. Um, I, oh, introductions? Just, yeah, okay. who you're with. Is, is um, you're, my yeah. name is Megan Beresford. I am the Director of Broadband Programs at Learn Design Apply. We are a grant consulting and management company. And I have been working with BCPC and uh, some of the counties in the area on the LADA grants and looking into the last mile grants. We're doing a lot of education and outreach. Um, so hopefully everyone here will be able to attend a, a webinar we have coming up, a little bit of promo on that. Um, and yeah, uh, excited to kind of be a part of things here. We'll be talking more about that in a little, in a little while. Uh, Shannon Sweeney. Hi, good morning all, Shannon Sweeney, Public Works, City of Guadalupe. And let's see, I had to move my screen over. Uh, Andres? Yeah, um, Andres Magana, Director of Community Engagement for a nonprofit out here in Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us, Andres. Thank you. And John from at and Hey, thanks, Bill. Good morning, everyone. John Heffernan, also with at and External Affairs team. I was covering for Monica in her absence, but um, it's always cool to hang out in Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo, and I'm hoping to continue to take some good information and tips to the folks down here in Orange County as uh, as they tackle some of the same planning that you guys have been spearheading. Thanks. And we also have Araceli Sandoval Gonzalez. Good morning, everyone. I'm Araceli. I'm a consultant for two uh, broadband nonprofits based here in Los Angeles. Thank you so much for joining us. Did I, I think I got everybody. Is somebody did not have a chance to introduce themselves? Wonderful. All right, you should have our front screen. Uh, uh, should be visible to you. And I uh, probably could have waited and let everybody have the full screen with the introductions. But uh, I'm going to go right into the program and talk about the fact that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about CPUC programs, grants, the, the activities that are occurring. Would like to have uh, Lorelei then jump in and talk about what they're doing in North San Luis Obispo County. Uh, we'll let uh, um, then shift and pivot come south to Santa Barbara County and Maria Kelly will do an update. We'll also be talking about ACP and Shelby will give an update on that topic. And I think Jory Wolf will be joining us towards the end of the meeting and we'll be talking about the Ventura County project and uh, what, what's happening there before we go to the round table and get everybody's comments. So um, I've eaten a lot of crow in the last uh, few months about how these programs are rolling out. I've been very skeptical of how long it's taken for the money to be to, to arrive. But now that it has, my goodness, it's just moving and it's moving fast and it keeps moving. And I'm, I'm astonished. I, I really am impressed with what's happening up north and the ability to keep up with it all. And uh, uh, they're, they're setting dates, they're meeting the dates, and actually some of the things are happening that are ahead of the dates. And, and so Ready or not, we're we're surfing at this point and just get, getting ready for the next wave. As a consortia, a few weeks ago, we finished our own consortia funding grant just in time to pivot to the local agency technical assistance grants. And, and then that was the predecessors to those were both grant funding in the adoption and public housing area. I mean, they're all coming out. 
And based on the ones that have flown, I'm starting to say, get ready. Right after the, you know, the September Labor Day, I would not be surprised if the last mile funding, which is going to be large and significant, you know, is something that we need to start talking about and working on as well. And I hope to be able to get in on that piece um, towards the end of the meeting and talk about that significantly because there's an awful lot of partnering, collaboration, and organization building that we want to be discussing as we get into those opportunities. Um, it's crazy. And that's all I can say. And I'm so thankful we've had this forum and these opportunities to be talking about it for a number of years because of the relationships that have been built in the organizations, as well as some of the strategies that we've been able to launch in anticipation of where this is all going. So, that's my CPUC update. Um, any other comments about what people are seeing and hearing in terms of just the state of affairs, the environment itself? Hopefully, some of you have been able to put together ladder grants uh, and are, are, are working on them, and uh, we can talk about that. It, it, if you are a municipality and you are interested in building capacity, funds are available for you. And uh, there's the, this first round is 50 million. Um, I'm told that there's other rounds on as, their way as well. And, and so, you know, right now the, the funding will uh, be available as long as supplies last, but there will be more funding in the next cycle. So um, questions, discussion, any comments from people that know? Maria, go ahead. Yeah, um, thanks, Bill. I want to talk a little quickly about the public housing availability. That is a completely 100% underutilized um, so the consortium within the next, well, next month or so, we'll be putting together a, a webinar for the public housing sector. This is going to be people self-help housing, how, Habitat for Humanity, any public housing sort of development. This is a, we keep getting told like this is completely underutilized and it helps build. It's actually for infrastructure building. So um, keep that in mind as you're working with local agencies or, that work in that space that will be doing some significant outreach to hopefully get some grants submitted and support our Tri-County region um, and get our get those people that need to be connected, connected. Thank you, Maria. This might be a good time to just uh, do a quick brief as we get into the next slide of ACP. Um, and, and then we'll before we go into the North Slope County area, the affordable connectivity program, because once again, we're talking funding sources and activities related to funding sources. Um, I will, I will uh, give you a little bit of background and just say, say that uh, there's some activity occurring in this space in San Luis Obispo County. There's been a lot of conversations occurring as it relates to Ventura County, but where all the action is, it's Santa Barbara County. And uh, we, Shelby Arthur has been really, really busy, you know, just pulling things together and I'll let her describe what's going on up there and then we can talk about why perhaps. Shelby? Sure, thanks, Bill. So in, in case you're not aware, the Affordable Connectivity Program is a federally funded uh, discount for eligible families, uh, $30 to apply towards their monthly home internet plans. It also includes a one-time $100 voucher towards a device. Um, this uh, is, is, you know, part of the in, um, infrastructure uh, plan and, and this funding came out um, in order to help more households get connected to the internet um, and have devices in their home that they can use. Uh, large screen devices, not just their mobile phones. Um, this last month, CETF had uh, launched the Get Connected California uh, campaign. And uh, we have been able to really pull together a bunch of folks across Santa Barbara County to uh, become part of the Get Connected campaign by either hosting events or by sharing information about ACP through their organizational channels. We reached out to uh, folks in, in our networks that already were working with people who were eligible for ACP. And a lot of them weren't talking about ACP with their clients. Uh, so we were able to educate them, get them trained in uh, how to submit an eligibility verification for uh, their clients to verify their eligibility so that they can then take that eligibility to any provider that uh, has opted into the ACP program in their uh, area 
and uh, get that $30 discount. In some cases, that makes their internet free, um, which is a huge help to some families that need it uh, or households in general that need it. The uh, Get Connected events will all be statewide on August 27th. That's this Saturday. And we were able to pull together four organizations that are hosting five different events across Santa Barbara County. I'm really excited that they came through and uh, we have one in each region actually of Santa Barbara County. We've got South County represented in Carpinteria at the library. Uh, Santa Barbara City College will be hosting one for the city of Santa Barbara and Goleta in, uh, at their Wake campus off of Turnpike. The Department of Social Services has opted in to host two sites, one in Lompoc and one in Santa Maria. And then the Family Resources Center is hosting a site over in Nukuyama uh, for their uh, clients that live over in that northeastern area of the county. So uh, we're, we're really excited about this. We're really pleased with all of the outreach. Um, we were able to connect with partners in education and verify that they couldn't host a site, but that they were able to utilize this opportunity to get all of their folks trained in how to help someone with an eligibility verification. Um, and I know Maria's hosting a, a site up in San Miguel. Did you want to touch on that real quickly? Yeah, super excited to be able to get at least one site um, in Slow County. And then anybody in South County should probably head down to Santa Maria <laughs> and work with social services down there. Um, we, we did not promote the fact that we each site has 15 Chromebooks to give away to um, residents that are able to sign up. And if we don't give them away this round, we will be able to give them away as we are able to connect people through the ACP program. Um, fortunately, what I, we've been able to secure a few bilingual volunteers, but San Miguel is a perfect place for us to start in Slow County. Um, as it does sort of fall into that underserved, unserved area. So working with Charter Spectrum, um, getting flyers from them, picking those up on Friday to make sure that people know who they can sign up with once they've met their qualifications. So it's a good test case for Slow County um, and hope to see more opportunities and more partners step forward. We were able to distribute all the information via the library system and the school districts, all the school districts, the, um, the CIO at the, at, the at the Unified School District was dis did distribute to all the schools. So the information's out there, we just are only able to host one site this time. Yeah, and I, and I just wanna emphasize that this is a launch point, right? This was really an opportunity. Um, you know, these will not be the only events. CETF is now talking about trying to have a campaign in October and in January. And so they're, they have some ongoing plans. Uh, they've been super helpful in developing promotional materials. They sent the Chromebooks over. You know, they have really been supportive in helping the planning of these events as well. But this is a, a launch point. We are really excited in Santa Barbara County that, that this is really a launch point for a bigger conversation about building uh, an uh, organized effort around how to get people connected through all the different agencies that, that reach the furthest uh, aspects of our population. So really excited about the turnout. So to, to bring this part of the conversation to close, I wanna just share an observation. And the observation is there is a big difference and it, it, I don't want, not want it to sound like a value judgment, but in a way it's just a lesson learned in terms of San Luis Obispo and Ventura County. What, what this requires, this level of success is organizations to put up their hand and say, we'll host, you know, we're in, count us in, let us do this for you. And we give an awful lot of credit to what Santa Barbara County has done in terms of organizing the strategy. We didn't see ACP coming. And, and what really happened as we put the strategy together was we started with data collection and speed testing, and then we went out and went to the, all the councils and got everybody aware of the need to collaborate together. And then we went out and conducted community events where we had education and not-for-profits and business and the chambers, everybody on a panel talking about this together. We didn't know about ACP when we were doing all this. But what happened was ACP fell in our lap. We didn't really like it at first. And then what we recognized is these people had already been talking. They're all ready to do this. And it was a natural evolution where all of a sudden the people we had already convened and been working with, they're ready to go. And this was just the first thing to do. I mean, and, and it was amazing, the uptake. And I think that there's a lesson learned there. 
that in terms of where we go in the next, whether it's this next quarter, whether it's right after the first of the calendar year, these convenings that happen in these communities of these stakeholders is going to be a very, very important part of what we do to get everybody talking about what do we do in these areas of need you know, with this population. So good lesson learned there. One more thing to share, and Maria, just putting you on alert um, before we go on to the San Luis Obispo one, and that is an upcoming webinar. And I, I saw Megan there a few minutes ago, I, you know, I, going back to the slide before, just as a description of all of the funding that's coming down and what we're trying to do is as these funding opportunities come and the eligibility comes and a lot of it's eligible, you know, specifically for municipalities, the public sector and, and community building and capacity building and all these things, we want everybody every community to take full advantage of these. And so just being aware of them and, and what is what the criteria is and the opportunity is, what the why is for these funding sources is gonna be very important. And Maria is queuing up a, a webinar and I believe it's this early mid month, next month. Yeah, it'll, it's, it's next month. I'll drop my RSVP email uh, in chat. And we also with Learn Design Apply, they did develop a guidebook um, that we have distributed to some of the local agencies that are interested. We will continue to distribute that. It's a real step-by-step -step of things to consider and how to prepare for granting. And then Megan's gonna do a deep dive. So we do have a, re we did have a resource developed um, and we'll hopefully have more for you because it's a really big area to be navigating at the state and federal level. So join us for an hour um, and email me if you want to attend. And I'm going to, I don't want to embarrass her, but I'm going to give her a real shout out. I mean, Learn Design Apply, especially Megan, they have a great business model. I mean, they can help you a little and they can help you a lot. And they can, you know, it's, it's really up to you, but they just want to be available. And, and, and that really works for us. And, and so in Santa Barbara County specifically, she is working in Ventura County some and and are a lot, but in, in Santa Barbara County, especially, you know, it, 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 we, the, we gave her the whole show and, and, and it was wonderful. And, and, and very, it was, it was great to be able to say, we want to do that and, and, and rabbit cadabra was done. And, and so anyway, I, I just want to thank her for being a resource and a partner of ours. And uh, Megan, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to what Marie and I have shared in terms of the, the landscape. Um, I think you did a great job covering the landscape. Um, I don't know that I would expand upon any of it, but um, I would kind of reiterate that we are here as a resource um, and that if you are interested in grant assistance, as Bill said, we can help a little bit or we can help a lot. Um, it really depends upon your needs, um, but we have a whole broadband division of our company. And so uh, that is our bread and butter for what we do. And we understand what CPUC is looking for, what nationally folks are looking for, um, and are really here for all aspects. So not just uh, deployment, but digital equity as well. So uh, happy to talk to anyone who has questions and um, very much happy to keep working with Bill and Maria. And uh, you're, you're, you're spanning all uh, funding sources, not only in terms of some of the CPUC funding and, and the, from in the state of California, you yourself are based in Washington, DC relationships with NTIA, uh, USDA, you know, the whole spectrum of broadband funding sources. So uh, we're re we haven't spent the time yet, but we really like to just de de really de uh, develop some kind of patchwork quilt of what funding sources fit in what places and, and what can we be doing in what timelines and, and really uh, take full advantage of this resource opportunities. Absolutely. And and I think there's never any problem with applying for multiple funding sources. I think oftentimes that's the best way to get things done. Um, and the nice thing is that if you overlap projects for multiple funding sources and one gets them, you can tell the other person, no, thanks. We already got the funds. So um, yeah. it never hurts to apply for the same project to multiple sources. You know, you're only just in increasing your chances of getting funded. So. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think, important to utilize all opportunities to, to get that grant funding. Thank you, Megan. Lorelei, speaking of funding, there's a lot of activity happening in San Luis Obispo, and I, I understand you've just taken advantage of one of those uh, grants as well, huh? 
Um, we haven't received a grant yet. We'll be working on, um, on probably a LATA application, but um, we are very excited to partner with the city of Paso Robles. I think in April, we prepared an MOU between our communities, our mayors shook hands on it and um, said we'll work together in some capacity to release an RFP. We released our RFP in June, July, and the closing date was August 19th. And so we received proposals. We're in the process of reviewing those for a broadband strategic plan for North County. Um, we have a, a great review committee and we're kind of taking a look now and seeing what, um, uh, what we need to do to um, get the right team on board. And so there we are. We're just in the process of reviewing those. We'll, we'd will we like to get under contract in the next month and be off to the races and get our strategic plan underway and apply for some grants to fill in the gaps, identify the gaps, fill in the holes and the infrastructure gaps and, and see where we go from there for some big projects. Well, we certainly appreciate the leadership your community has shown and the partnership up in the north part of San Luis Obispo County. And uh, we would are, are, are thankful for that and uh, looking forward to the momentum that continues to build up there. So, and I think as the last mile funding starts moving into play, I mean, that's going to, you know, there's going to be a coalescence of, of, of all the communities up there wanting to, to pursue that and make those kinds of opportunities happen. Yeah, we're hoping we can link arms across city boundaries and get some things going to, uh, um, you know, collaborate across the miles and within even to other counties to our north and south. So anybody who wants to play along, we'll, <laughs> we're keeping an eye on what everybody's doing, all the great work that's going on in Santa Barbara and, um, you know, catching up with folks in Monterey to see what they're doing, seeing how we can all work together. Monterey's moving out. I mean, they've, they've got a very, very strong group up there and that's, it's very important that we keep up with them. So any questions regarding San Luis Obispo County and the activities up there? Anything to add anybody and, or any questions at all, comments? Okay. Thank you, Lorelai. Absolutely. Um, Maria, let's talk. Maria is, is uh, the, our program manager for the um, Santa Barbara County project, uh, putting together a broadband strategy. And, and so we'll let her report on the status uh, on where we're at this month. Great. Thanks, Bill. Wanted to um, put the, the model in place sort of as how we're organized because we're organizing um, infrastructure conversations and people conversations in the same way and really coalescing around the regional organization and being led by SBCAG. Um, created a broadband coalition that was, included all the MOU partners and um, all just a really incredible group of people. And, and off that, we've been able to launch a digital equity coalition, um, which Shelby is heading up and doing some great work with the Santa Barbara Foundation. So lots of really great things sort of happening in real time because of the strategy project, um, trying to keep all the balls moving forward. So we are in the process of writing. It's um, a huge project doing each city and really providing tangible um, information for each city and how to align with broadband for all. And we chose, you know, broadband for all was the obvious choice because that's the funding is there at the federal and state level. We're trying to align it with um, significant legislation, whether it's, you know, really driving this public sector conversation is SB 156. So um, presenting to city councils and making sure that there's that 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 front of mind and planting all those seeds that the public sector is a participant in this next round of infrastructure and uh, deployment and work. So um, with the work in place, not only did a digital equity coalition get launched in tandem, we thought that would happen later after the project, but we couldn't wait, had to happen now. Um, got two lot of grants submitted as a within this sort of alignment um, with SBCAG, submitting one for continuing regional work, and then uh, the county submitting for high-level design and a programmatic EIR. Um, programmatic EIR has been identified as a best practice for counties, specifically rural counties, um, of which San Luis Obispo and um, Santa Barbara are. They're both members of RCRC. We were able to engage with RCRC and get a letter of support from them as well. So Santa Barbara County is the proud participant of one of eight LATA grants um, that, that RCRC is working with. So hopefully more will, will come join in as well as there's lots of capacity building that can be done with that grant project. Been meeting with, um, trying to meet 
as much as possible, but again, this is also moving, is the middle mile conversation. Um, there's designs that are out um, in our most recent meeting with Caltrans and our that our district in our region, they, they have a, a map that's current for now, but at the end of the day, they're talking about installing 10,000 miles of middle mile infrastructure um, of their, what, 18,000, I believe. And so there's a lot of moving parts trying to identify where there is infrastructure, where there needs to be expansion. Um, again, working with Golden State Connect and, and RCRC, really keeping all those so that the communities that are prepared to understand how and where they want to connect. There is design work in place and, and things will get put some places or they won't and there will have to be go back and cities may have to go back and do extra work um, unless we're engaged in really helping call some of that out. So working really closely with the cities in um, Santa Barbara County right now and making sure that they're aware of, you know, that at the end of the day, what we're trying to build and identify for them and, and focus on is redundancy and resiliency within their networks, um, making sure that they're they're not going to be disconnected if you know if at all possible. So it's been um, the writing is of course taking on a much bigger life of its own, creating these city narratives, taking the county narratives, and and also in all of this planting smart city planning, the smart city seeds. Um, keeping in mind this is for here and now, but we're also really building this infrastructure for the future. So around the center, you see all the different things that are going to come out of this project. Um, uh, that approach, what are those approaches? How do they align with currently happening at the state level? Um, again, that collaborative organizing, that's how the Digital Equity Coalition launched so quickly was able to respond to ACP. It was directly through the work efforts and that engagement at the community level. It really is grassroots and pushing up into um, these conversations and meeting with anyone that's involved, whether it's the public or the private sector, you know, having conversations, really important conversations with all our, our ISP partners as well and keeping them engaged. Um, and Tim helping, you know, update, making sure we have a, an accurate map. We can see what the CPUC is telling us, um, but we can also can tell from other data that there's some other gaps that we're, we've identified and or there are there are no gaps. So really trying to be a partner and, and, and create meaningful data that's really going to help Santa Barbara build out this, this regional infrastructure and create this web for them. So it's been a really fun project. It's been a much bigger lift than anticipated. And um, thank you to Shelby and Bill and Sasha and, and Tim and everyone that's contributing. This is the most complicated group work I've ever done in my entire life. And it's it's incredibly rewarding already. So um, it, it's a huge benefit to the county. So happy to answer any questions, but um, looking forward to a draft being published, whether it's ready or not on September 8th on SBCAC's website, you can start seeing um, how these stories are evolving and what what is the story of Santa Barbara County. Maria, you and I haven't had a chance to chat about the Cuyama emails going back and forth, but you know, as they do, I was struck by the Caltrans conversation we had and the fact that there is a pilot to put fiber in the ground in Cuyama, and, and it's one of the pilot prototype projects that came out of the Golden State Network. We've been working in that particular space for quite some time. And the urgency was something I just was really surprised to, to hear from Caltrans. And it's, it's like, we're, we're, we're not talking about next year. We're talking about now. We're, the planning is occurring. We're, we've got a timeline. This will be happening in not years, but months. And, and uh, you know, to think about being able to go to that little community in Santa Barbara County with that kind of urgency and promise and deliver upon it. I mean, I, I think that as I say, I mean, a lot of crow, but the, the, it's amazing what is actually happening as we apply these funds into these communities. And I think what's really significant is that we are such a unique blend of rural and urban, and we don't always think those of even on this meeting right now, there are members in our communities that are disconnected. And it's not just for, it's not for adoption and, and training. It truly is access. We had an email again last night from Cuyama that they were down for several days. Um, Wi-Fi, you name it, it was down. And from when you're talking about this time and communications, it, it's everything. And so really to lose that link and that connection um, really can be incredibly stressful. And part of the conversations, one of the questions we asked in our outreach was, 
what are you seeing on the impacts on your quality of life when our conversations with UCSB, they're looking at that, you know, impacts on quality of life, losing that infrastructure has a lot more weight than we've realized. And so that's starting to come up in these stories. And I think it's an important piece to keep the people piece of this infrastructure development um, in our line of sight. Thank you, Maria. Any questions or comments about what's going on in Santa Barbara County at this point? Okay. I don't see Jory here yet. And I know that Terry Theobald is at another meeting and won't be able to make it. Uh, I will provide you an update. Um, we, we've, you've, many of you have heard about the Ventura County Middle Mile Project. Uh, over the last couple of years, of the, the work has been occurring, and we're now moving into the LADA phase and uh, writing grants. And LADA is the first of many to follow. To, we'll be looking for for funding and collaboration and build out of, of this activity. And last mile certainly will be part of it as well. Um, so thank you to everybody that in the last week or two has been able to put together letters of support for the County of Ventura and their application for funding. And uh, I, I don't, Megan, I don't know if it went into yesterday or today, but it's going in this week. You know, in, in, a, of, in a few hours, actually. Yeah, so the, the, the we, we appreciate the letters of support that have been uh, provided and uh, it'll help uh, weigh the package up in terms of the pile and the importance and the visibility that we've got and uh, it's all good so the letters that we created and the template we created was deliberately broad and it's because we are looking at eda we are looking at ntia we are looking at the lot and other cpuc dollars and instead of going back every time there's a funding requirement we want to be able to use the same letters in multiple times for multiple proposals so that's that's why they were deliberately written broad. Brian Chong has been part and parcel of this conversation all along. And you know, I welcome you and invite you to share your reaction. You've been able to muster support from the, the city side, the public side as well. And what's your perspective on what, what's happening here in Ventura County, Brian? I know I, I think between our efforts and Megan and her team's efforts in putting the application together, we're going to have a very competitive grant application for this. Um, you know, we're a little bit ahead maybe of the other counties. We got started a little earlier, so we're actually trying to, to build stuff. Uh, so what our lot of grant is going for is the actual construction drawings um, that will result in a biddable package to get someone to actually install the first phase, which would be along the 126 corridor from uh, Satakoy, just outside of Ventura, uh, through Fillmore, through Santa Paula, through Piru, and connecting to Santa Clarita. Um, you may know that here notice that more park is missing and that's because we're in the next phase so we of course want to get phase one done so we can get uh started on the phase connecting through more park but um I, I think what bill said much much earlier that this needs to be a regional collaborative effort um that very much is the case and and the more partners you have in santa barbara's county sounds like you're well on your way there that organization is key to actually getting things to move quickly and the ability to move quickly is i, I think key in a lot of these funding situations yeah, and I I know you're going to have a, a more park report with, towards the end when we do the roundtable, but a shout out to you anyway for all of the development, forward looking, smart city leadership that you're showing from your community. So, uh, other questions or comments concerning status for Ventura County? Okay, let's move and talk about last mile pilots. Um, I, I guess this is a, I use the word pilots because I, I, I really think that the best chance of getting grant funding is to have done it, been there, done that, is, is to have evidence that you know, we're, what we're proposing works and what we want to do with the funding is just continue to use proven strategies. And so, yes, there is funding coming. Yes, the, you know, there'll be resources available. I mean, it'll, and we're talking probably within six months. But now is the time to be talking about what are you going to do with it? How are you going to do it? What, what coalitions, what uh, groups have you pulled together? What are the strategies they're going to employ? Can we show that it's being done today? Can we do it today? Can we have partners already make investment today? All of these things are very, very important. And so 
you know, there's certain communities, uh, I'm thinking of Santa Paula and Oxnard and, and others in Ventura County. I'm thinking of Guadalupe and Los Alamos and others, Cuyama in Santa Barbara County and San Miguel and you know, others in, in San Luis Obispo County. We really want to have countywide participation in, in these conversations about how do you get from how do you get access the deployment to access to adoption to literacy? I mean, it, there is an arc that has to be done, and we want to be able to close the gap, get people connected, get people signed up, and then get the training that needs to be done. Any equipment is fits in there as well. All, and we need to do it. I hate to be militaristic, but we have to do it with discipline. We have to do it because we've done it before. We know all the pieces and the parts and, and all the partners that come in from the various perspectives know their place and, and when it happens. And so that truly is the nature of the collaborative effort that we're seeking to be able to do as resources in our community. So don't want to drill down in any one particular one. We're inventing them all the time when we talk and have conversations. This is the stuff that we're living and breathing day in and day out. But if you are interested, if you are aware, you know, if you want to participate in these kinds of conversations, please let us know. Uh, Shelby, you've been very active in, in a lot of this stuff, you know, in this planning. ACP is a very, very small part of it. You might have some thoughts about on this topic. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, this is really an opportunity for us to demonstrate how. Um, uh, these partnerships that are, are the conversations that have already been happening between public, private, nonprofit, collaborative um, organizations can really get us uh, uh, into helping people get that access. Um, there are pockets of our communities where, as Maria was stating, they just literally don't have the um, <laughs> the the tech, the it's not getting to their homes right and so the ACP is a small part of it but it's um it's an important part of it uh but it doesn't mean anything if they don't have a provider that can actually uh, provide them service yeah so I don't I, I'm giving you a, just a, a quick Notice Jamie Fall, but I hope you're there at your computer. Um, th there is a relationship to all of this broadband and connectivity and with upskilling. And, and that's your your uh, your role. And you know, we've had our conversations now about if once we get connectivity and once the literacy and the connection is there's a handoff in terms of some of the things you're interested in. And I just wanted to know, you know, have me you maybe share a few thoughts about how we might be able to be working together in, in achieving. To, from connectivity all the way up and upskilling and in the, the charter that you have underway. Hi, Bill. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I still have a lot to learn. I'm still trying to learn, but yeah, we're we're trying to pay a lot of attention about what are the jobs that are going to be created through expanded broadband and how does that change digital skill needs? What are the digital skills that individuals need to be able to take advantage of these? of uh, broadband once it's available and that's what we're really focused on uh, through part of our digital upskilling initiative looking now at uh, creating a program through our adult schools in the county to really help develop basic digital skills for those who have um, you know likely no digital skills uh, really at this time so so much work to do in the area I'm also really excited about um, uh, the opportunities that the Digital Equity Act uh, offers federally uh, to help uh, with some uh, with some programs later on and some additional funding. So um, I'm I'm not sure how much I can add, but I I can tell you I'm gaining a lot, Bill, and I really appreciate uh, you hosting this uh, call and appreciate the opportunity to sit in on that. Well, it's it's everything connects, and we just need to make sure that we know where the connections are. Bill, no. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, I how um, worked up I get about this particular topic about the last mile. So I'm just going to share again, the last mile, I believe, is an incredible opportunity for us to be able to train and empower our local communities to be able to develop their own capacity to actually build out and provision that. It will give, it's, it's not a matter of getting some big daddy to come in and create jobs and, and then hope to God that those jobs will, will, will be available to the local community, but it's the other way around. So the local community builds the capacity to service themselves and the training that we want to give them, the education 
and the tools and the funding to be able to get business off the ground will be a, a different way of actually you know, stirring the pot over here. Otherwise, waiting for a large organization to come in and build stuff out there, I'm probably going to be you know, in a different place by that time that happens. <laughs> so you know that. So, yeah. yeah. We'll say, uh, just speaking from the Moorpark side, I don't care if you're a Titan, medium, small, if you're looking for the public agency for your PPP, we're willing to play ball in Moorpark. Um, you know, we are a, you know, an urban community. We are a fairly well-off community demographically. So we don't by ourselves, you know, create a lot of opportunity that's always best for getting grant funding. Um, but what we do have is we have city-owned streetlights. We have a very willing organization um, and a lot of political will to be on the cutting edge of anything. So if you're looking for, to pilot with someone and you need a government agency for those ISPs on the call, just please reach out to me. And we're already working with some on some ideas, but we haven't committed to anything yet. But we're open. That sounds good. That's exactly the sort of, you know, what we were looking for, to be able to then encourage people to set up their own small businesses. Could be just to start off, maybe that's how electricians got business, landscapers got business. And there's no reason why if you don't get the right training and skills, you, you can't get into the business of wiring people's homes and building out that stuff, as long as it conforms to standards and, and, and meets the expectations of a larger plan that somebody is putting in place, hopefully. Thank you for your comments. Other comments? So let's move to the round table. And uh, as we, and we're in good shape, I, we maybe will give you some time back in terms of uh, your lunch break. Uh, we appreciate you being here over your lunch break and uh, don't mind you eating your lunch. Um, stakeholder updates though, what's happening in the various communities? Uh, happy to, to invite people like Mike Johnson and Brian Chong and you know, Laura, anybody from a municipality to, to talk about where you're at, what you're thinking is. Lorelai's already shared some of the things she's doing, but uh, if you have any comments about uh, you, the organizations you're part of, or even if you're uh, if, from an industry standpoint, if you want to talk about the programs you're having and, and uh, the partnerships you're building, we'd welcome you to, to share those thoughts as well. And to, uh, We'll open the floor to anybody that wants to be able to provide briefings and status and updates. Brian, your your uh, little square is yellow. It looks like you're ready to say something. Yeah, I want to give a, a heads up to um, Mike Johnson. I'd love to hear when I'm done an update about what happened at Ventura with their broadband efforts at their recent council meeting. I actually don't know what happened, but what I wanted to share with the group, and it just speaks to the idea of piloting with more park and I did not run this by Greg Hayward mentioning this today, but usually I brag about our successes and whatnot, but I, I want to actually share a failure. Uh, so we have a pilot project with uh, one of Greg's um, companies, uh, you know, entrepreneurial ideas um, for object sensors that uh, had, were doing two things. Uh, one was counting traffic and measuring speeds of vehicles in a residential neighborhood that we're getting a lot of complaints about people speeding through. Um, the other is to count trucks. Um, and specifically gravel trucks driving on a particular road here in Moore Park. Um, it's a pilot program. And you know, you enter into these expecting and hoping that this is going to work perfectly and everything's going to be amazing. Um, and in this case, um, the initial rollout um, basically had a hardware failure that was not working to spec. And you know, our initial time frame and initial rollout failed. Um, and there's, you know, there was an awkward conversation where Greg had to relay that to the Moore Park team here that we're not going to be able to do this. And, and, and the response from Moore Park was, hey, you know, you, you don't hit a home run every swing you take. You know, the relationship is still there. We're going to retool. And actually, Greg's working on that now and redeploy until we can do this. But I think just to temper my normal idealism, I, I think you do have to recognize that sometimes they don't work out. But you keep going because you're going to get that home run or that grand sum eventually. And, you know, it's incumbent on us as the partners in some of these things to be like, hey, we're doing this and we're going forward. And, you know, when I have to answer to our city council and to our, you know, police chief in this case and our residents, you know, the advantage of the pilot program, right, is like, how much money did more park taxpayers pay to, to not have this work? And the answer to that is nothing. We didn't spend any money and, and lose any money. And, I think that's the message is, you know, hey, if at first you don't succeed, as they say, try, try, try again. 
Well, you were talking about the last mile, the pilots. I, I, I was going to allow Greg to fly below the radar, but since you mentioned it, there's some real cool tech, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I had just let, suffice it to say, um, once again, I appreciate the, the opportunity to have a place to, to play with it and try it out and see how it works. Greg? Yeah, the uh, process has not gone as expected, but the outcomes are still worth pursuing. So we're uh, we're moving forward, and Moore Park is incredibly supportive in this, and we have such a myriad of opportunities, and we're really understanding why smart city rollout hasn't been more expedient. So we're going to be able to create a template and a pathway forward for being able to have more park be the nucleus for expansion. Mike, you have your hand up. It's your turn. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Uh, you know, I would just say it's the slow motion train wreck in Ventura. Um, we've decided that sci-fi is going to fix all our problems in five years. And in fact, we've gone so far now as to say that they will handle um, that, that we'll just lease space from them on their fiber for our critical city infrastructure needs. So um, I guess we'll check in in five years and see how that's gone. Thanks. Well, we'll we'll continue to follow. We'll continue to stay close. You know, it's uh, we have a saying in the engineering community, you build a little and you test a lot. And as we start breaking ground and you see how these relationships start falling into play, planning is very different than execution. And so there's a lot of chances and opportunities to uh, make course corrections along the way. But Mike, we appreciate you being here. Other comments for our round table? Just real quick, uh, if you want to get a sense of urgency, go ahead and dial back your broadband speeds by about half, which is what I experienced over the last week in Alaska. And you'll realize it's like oxygen. You take it for granted until it's not there. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. I, I'm going to give a shout out to Cox, Eleanor. I mean, once again, in terms of ACP, uh, Cox is recognized as the one company that is is closing the gap when it comes to equipment. And uh, we just appreciate the efforts of your organization to do that and, and, and to lead the, the way in that part of the conversation. So. Thanks, Bill, and very grateful to partner with you and the whole BCPC team. Um, and Shelby, thanks to you for getting California connected off the ground in Santa Barbara. We're excited to be a part of it. So thanks all. Couldn't happen without everybody stepping up, so. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments today in our round table? Bill, George here. And yeah, George. Uh, just From reflecting back on the earlier conversation, uh, the topic of redundancy and resilient was mentioned. Resiliency was mentioned. Yeah. And, you know, with essential infrastructure by local government, county government, municipalities, nonprofits, et cetera, first responders, uh, the communities rely on the services to be always available. They rely on three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And it's okay to have redundancy built into the government networks to overcome outages. So it's also good that we have competition, we're fostering competition, but in, in essence, what we're also doing here with this subject, a subject matter and the experts here, is we're also fostering redundancy, failover resiliency. And that's something we, we overlook. And this is, you know, something that came up this week locally, and it's, uh, it's a big issue. So hopefully the work here will solve some of that uh, and prevent some crisis down the line. George, once again, you've been successful at triggering me. Um, was, hopefully in a good way. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is a, a topic that uh, I'm, I'm trying to, it's, a, it's a, from the military standpoint, mission critical. 
Um, it's a topic we need to talk about. We need to figure out how to talk about it. Um, what George is referring to is I did get a call, and I'll leave out all names and organizations, but I did get a call from somebody on the public side yesterday talking about a company that experienced an outage. I'm going to, that's a, let me, let me go ahead and get off the screen share. Um, because you, oh, you don't need to, are we off or are you, am I still sharing my screen? You are not sharing your screen. Cool. I'm glad. Uh, there, so I know that there's certain municipalities that have relied on this company, and I, and I feel bad for the organization that having to do the scampering that they're having to do. You know, I think that there was an incident Saturday, Sunday in L.A. Uh, a, a whole big major cable was uh, interrupted, and, and I can't imagine the intricacy of trying to put something back together again. Um, it's why we have middle miles. It's why we talk about redundancy and resiliency and, and why we need it as a region. Um, and I don't know how long of a process it'll be to restore. You know, I, I think the loss is devastating. Um, but also being down to the or all, the, all those affected is devastating. And, and, and so, you know, coming out of the military, working in classified environments, things that make us vulnerable, we don't talk about in public. You know, and, and, and we as we get into Santa Barbara County talking about strategies, I have a lot of concerns about publishing middle mile maps because all of a sudden it invites adversaries. If you want to disrupt communications in a region, this is where you target your disruptions as uh, evidenced by these kinds of things that occurred in L.A. over the weekend. We have to talk about it, but we also have to figure out, you know, how to talk about it because... Every region needs to have the conversation and have the planning and have the relationships and collaboration where we can take care of one another when these things occur and protect them and keep them from occurring. Um, I, you Google it and you find out that, you know, as, although it's newsworthy, it's not in the news. I think that's a good thing. But, you know, at the same time, we're under the, the, the confines of a public process and public dialogue. And so you have to figure out where you can solve these problems in a meaningful way, keep it public, but also keep it very, very private and, and, and very unique to those involved. So I don't have answers here. There's there's models, I think, that we can learn from about, you know, certainly the military is a starting point, but you don't want to classify it up either, you know, and exclusionary. You, you want to keep it open to competition and innovation. So it's a very, very big subject that uh, has been brought up. And welcome to the opportunity to talk to anybody offline about this. I'm thinking about a lot, um, especially as we start talking about the networks that you just saw, you know, in terms of the middle mile. Um, I'm glad they're concepts that may be the only public disclosure that we give them is the conceptual ideas. And then at that point, as you get more specific, we stop showing those kinds of things in, in public forums. So lots of things that people can comment about, I invite it, but it's interesting. Uh, Mike, you, you look like you had a comment on it and uh, I, I didn't want, mean to cut you off or, or, or go too long. Well, thank you. I, I realize we're pressed on time. I just wanted to say, you know, at the city of Ventura where we had problems where police dispatch police records, the in vehicle computers for our police department, our planning department, uh, the different planning portals our VPN, our water billing system, our water meter data collection, our automated bank transfers, our business license applications. And a lot of those are still down. Yep. Um, we've got the police, the public safety stuff back up, but things like automated bank transfers, we don't have a timeline for getting that service restored. It's it's difficult. Yeah. The one article I did find talked about the LA County jails. And if you have a system where the doors are swinging open and closed automatically and all the, the programming and software is up in the cloud, but you can't get to the cloud, wow, you've got a, you've got a problem. And, and so it's great when it works, but sometimes things don't always work. So any other comments on that topic? I like the way that you have uh provided a summation of that bill and uh, appreciate it and uh, the recognition towards it because it is regionally important. It's just not an isolated incident 
uh, from the carrier perspective, you know, the carriers experience outages ongoing and they try to, you know, mitigate the impact of those outages towards their customer bases. But if you look inside the service agreements, you know, they have a clause for indemnification for force majeure events. And it seems that this one carrier had a force majeure event. And the recovery time is not within their SLAs. So the burden is really upon the local agency, if you will, the customer to plan for these events and not be solely reliant on a single source provider. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a big discussion to have and I hope we can explore it more as a group. Yeah, it's uh, coming from the IT perspective, COOPS, the, the continuity of operations plan, I mean, all those are critical. You never want to use them, but you, you sometimes have to. And, and the continuity of operations is, is mission critical. Yeah, and Dr. I can put a little more meat on those bones because we are an agency in Park who's having that conversation internally right now. So, you know, we, we are moving our city hall. So we have closed escrow on a building. We're designing our, our tenant improvements right now to move in next year. And so we have kind of two concerns. One is internet connectivity, and the other is because we span half a dozen buildings across the city is point-to-point -point connectivity. Um, right now, on our internet connectivity side, um, we have, you know, primary service from, um, actually, I'll say it, it's Spectrum, who's the incumbent provider here in Moorpark, who we use, and we have a second connection that we pay for with AT&T. Um, that is a very, very old incapable of really doing a lot, um, but DSL connection through AT&T. Um, we acknowledge that is not sufficient. Um, so the decision that we're looking at in the new building um, is you know, certainly obviously we need connectivity from one of them, but is the possibility of getting a fiber connection, a redundant one through AT&T. So for us, in case spectrum goes down, um, but that, that's a literal doubling of your cost, right? You know, to do that. And you know, those are the decisions now. Um, you know, we also have you know, through the air communications to get to other places that we have as backups. And actually, if anyone's interested, uh, we are offering free training for uh, ham radio operators to get certified here in Moore Park, um, which is plan C for our emergency co you know, communications. Um, but yeah, those are real conversations that happen. And in Moore Park, we are having those right now. And shout out to AT&T and Spectrum. We are still waiting for your uh, quotes on on the service to the new building. So your, your sales teams are responsive. We just don't have the numbers yet. And once again, I, I can't tell you how sympathetic I am to the situation that occurred. I mean, I mean, designing networks and help desks and all of this kind of stuff. You know, Six Sigma is what everybody strives for. You know, it, it's in terms of 0.9999 kinds of, uh, you know, uh, uptime all the time. And, and you, you, there's always, you'll never get it 100%. You know, these things happen. And, and so you just got to be ready for them when they do. Yep. So. That's, Bill, just to put a cap on this as it relates to the middle mile network and the network maps, the diversica diversification of the fiber lays. And if you go back to that term sonnet, which is a self-healing type of network, if there's an outage in the ring, it shouldn't affect the majority of the customers. You know, with the redundancy that we're looking for potentially with this middle mile network with north, south, and east, as long as those routes don't rely on the same point of presence to connect to, then there should be some redundancy. If everything feeds into the same location, then there's a lack of redundancy. Um, so these are all things to consider. You know, the concept had come out with, you know, pulling through the 126 down to the five and all the way out to Las Vegas for redundancy. But if we're just relying on a connection to one Wilshire or Gardenia, well, then, you know, there's a, a fail point potentially. But that's a very long conversation and a regional discussion. It's not any one particular city, but when the particular cities are looking for their bids, I would suggest, you know, not only look for a, your diversity with 
your service provider, but make sure that the routes that the service provider is using are not the same underlying routes for backhaul, for connectivity to the major internet point of presence. Make sure they have diversity and redundancy within their networks to provide your service. So, so one of the uh, applications going in from Perlata for the County of Santa Barbara is for high level design. And th these are the kinds of things we're thinking about. I mean, they, they, when, when the consultant that gets hired, the, the funding will come up, our people go out, a consultant will be hired that has expertise in this particular area. And that's this, these are the kinds of things that we need to be factoring into the, the outcome of that work, you know, is, is how do we create these high level designs for a region with these intricate points of pre presence that are, if one fails, we've got some failover. You know, and even the offshoring, we've talked about this at length, even if there's a route heading out to Hawaii or Guam and connected to, you know, an internet service provider, you know, in, in Hong Kong or Singapore or New Zealand or Australia. I mean, that will offer some diversity too in these force majeure events. Now, a whole other issue comes in is about privacy, et cetera. But, you know, these are how the carriers operate uh, yeah. globally with major points of presence. And it would be great to see if there's some way to apply some of the lessons from any post-mortem discovery about this recent outage and you know, try to plan for a better future. Yeah. Thank you, George. Thank you, Bill. Any other topics that we should be talking about while we're here together before we close the meeting down? Okay. I just wanna thank you once again, everybody for being here and uh, we'll look forward to reconvening in uh, September. Yeah, for our monthly meeting to continue this conversation and to keep the updates coming. Uh, just fasten your seatbelts. It's an interesting time and things are moving fast. And to, you know, at any point in time, feel free to reach out, email, page, text, call, whatever, and we'll stay connected. Okay. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thank you all. Have a good one.